All right, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, I hope to share some of my thoughts and wisdom with you guys regarding raw foods and uh, raw vegan diets. All right, so the first thing I want to say is that I have been on a raw vegan diet now since 1995, so that's 23 years at this point, which may change, you know, if you're watching this a couple years after I have made this video. Uh, but I want to encourage you guys to actually seek out people that have been doing a raw foods diet for a, a good period of time, but also improving and changing their approach as they go. You know, I learned things a long time ago that I would never do now, and you know, so I've always tried to improve what I'm doing for my specific goals, and my specific goals to let you guys know are for number one, health, and number two, for longevity, you know, and, and to have the best life, and to live the fullest life as possible. And some other people may have other reasons to do raw foods or raw vegan diet, whether that's for the animals or whether that's for fame and fortune or for whatever else. And that's cool, you know. But, you know, if you're here watching this, know that the information I'm teaching you is, is the best information that I know that can improve your health and also increase your longevity. Two important things uh, for me and hopefully for you guys as well. Now, the topic of today's video is specifically about all raw food diets or raw vegan diets are not created equal. This is very important and I want to get this out there because you know when you try to like lump things together in one category like all people of this color are bad or all black dogs they bite or all white dogs oh they're good dogs because they're white right I've had white dogs that actually bit me <laughs> but you know or all bees bees are just out to sting you or spiders they're all poisonous well some spiders are poisonous and not all you know, bees are going to sting you, especially if you're not messing with them. But, you know, it's these like, cater cater when we categorize things with like a few words, you know, all vegans are unhealthy or, you know, all this. When we start, start getting into these things, all this is bad, all this is good. I want you guys always to think in shades of gray or, you know, I like to say just to make it simpler, is good, better, best. You know, there's always good, better, best ways of doing things in life. And I try to share with you guys the best ways of doing things. So, you know, this is all of, this episode is all about um, raw vegan diets and why they're not all created equal. So anyways, uh, let's get into it. So I think the first thing that could be helpful is defining what is a raw vegan diet. So it depends on who you ask. On my original website, rawfoods.com, I think I list that one of the most important criteria of a raw food is that it's not heated above 118 degrees or sometimes people say 105 because that's because the excavator dehydrator runs about 10 degrees too hot. Um, and so that's be like the main criteria. So if it's if a food, no matter how processed it was, and it can be processed in other ways besides heat, like olive oil, um, you know, as long as it's not heated above 105, it's raw and it's fine. I could eat it, right? And so that's a very narrow definition in my uh, opinion. Um, so uh, I would actually say that if you guys are into raw foods, check a link down below. And it's actually uh, titled, you know, why all raw foods are not healthy. You know, just because it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy. It's a video I did where I, where I take a group on a group lesson uh, through a process of determining if a food is actually raw or not. Because there's many different definitions that you should have about a raw food. And it's not whether for me or anybody else to say what they are. Uh, but in this uh, group process, we come up with a definition that I think is fairly congruent. So you might want to watch that for all the different things that a raw food is. Now, the other thing is that, you know, people want to lump together raw food diet as being many different styles of diets, not just one diet. So going with our not heated above 118 degrees, you know, there's many different formats of raw diets you guys could have. You guys could have a fruitarian diet, you know, and true fruitarians or pure fruitarians you know, they don't believe in eating any vegetables. You know, they eat only fruit. And then you have, you know, fruitarians that will eat mostly vegetables and some fruits. And you have like an 80-10-10 diet. That's 80% 80, 80 of your calories come from carbs, 10% from protein, 10% from fats. Then you, that's, you know, that could also be considered high carb, low fat. But even that could be a little bit different because that might have a little bit higher protein and higher fat. Um, because the numbers aren't specifically specified. <laughs> um, you could also have a high fat raw food diet where you're getting most of your calories from fat and not from carbohydrates or a raw keto <laughs> ketogenic diet you could have a juicearian diet you could eat drink nothing but juices you know 
Um, you could have a living foods lifestyle diet or like the Ann Wigmore style, which is basically lots of greens with very little fruits, you know, but whole foods. You could have a whole food raw vegan diet where you're only consuming whole raw foods and nothing in a highly processed form. You could have what other kind of raw foods? A sproutarian, eat nothing but sprouts. You could have a gourmet raw food diet where you're only eating gourmet raw food. So if you have like raw food restaurants around you, <laughs> there's not many around, and you go there and that's what you're eating all the time, hey, you're raw because technically they say they're raw, but technically I could prove any raw food restaurant probably technically isn't raw. But uh, nonetheless, um, you know, that's a gourmet raw food diet. You could have a packaged raw food diet, you know, go to the store and buy packaged raw food kale chips and that's what you're eating all the time. You know, packaged raw foods, they have these packaged raw food chocolates and candies and cookies and snacky treats and things like that. And that could be considered raw, right? You could be on a raw till four popularized by some popular YouTubers back in the day. I don't know if that's still going or very popular. But basically you could eat raw foods until four and then after that, you know, I don't, I don't know, I think you could probably eat anything or they wanted to eat high carbohydrate foods and even processed sugars and things were allowed on that diet. You know, there's so many different ways to do raw, so when somebody says, I failed at raw foods, you know, what specifically were they eating is my main question, and they probably weren't eating a good balanced raw food diet. You know, you could have a high raw diet, right? That's where you eat high raw or lots of raw foods with some percentage of cooked foods, right? And then if you say, oh, raw foods didn't work because you ate a high raw diet, well, what were those raw foods you're eating? What were those cooked foods you're eating? You know, what were you really eating after four? Were you eating raw foods and eating fruits and vegetables until four? And then after four o'clock, you're like, ah, four o'clock, going to McDonald's. <laughs> you know, there's so many different things, you know. So, you know, there's, it, it's just sad when people don't, it doesn't work for them on raw foods. You know, I've seen so many people into raw foods a couple years ago and now they're doing a keto or now they're just back to eating junk foods or, you know, now I, I've met people at different events and, you know, they lost a ton of weight and they're really motivated about raw foods. They know it works, but then they get back into life, like life sucks them in and then they start eating, you know, vegan cheeseburgers and vegan pizzas and things. And I just think that's sad because they, they know how raw foods affect them, but it's, it's hard to overcome societal pressures and also I mean I probably don't blame them I mean I make some really good tasty delicious raw foods and if you guys want to know what I'm eating on a daily basis uh, check the link down below to my gygbook.com you could get my recipe book and those are recipes that actually I eat that I think taste good but it's also based on my taste buds where I'm not eating processed junk food or raw foods or even vegan foods uh, but you know and my recipes are designed for health and I think they taste great and it's provided me the highest level of health. But some people get sucked into the flavors of the foods and you know, I, I probably don't blame them. If I started eating some, you know, vegan processed foods or more eat a lot of vegan, raw vegan junk foods, I'd probably not want to eat fruits and vegetables either because it probably tastes hella good. But the thing I know is I also am aware on how that makes me feel, how my body feels after I go to a raw food restaurant to do a raw food restaurant review or just for fun or whatever like that. I don't feel like getting up the next day and I don't like how that makes me feel. So I want you guys to be more in touch with your body. And even if you're doing a raw food diet, according to the book, you're doing a Dr. Morris diet, I mean, whatever diet you are on, and if it's not agreeing with you, I want you guys to adjust and change your approach. Although my approach that I use works for me and different approaches, 80-10-10 works for different people. You know, if it's not working for you, I want you to change and adjust. And I want you to do things so that you will be successful in the long term on a raw food diet. And I don't like even saying raw foods diet anymore. I like to say fruit and vegetable dominated. So whole fruit and vegetable dominated diet with, uh, you know, especially emphasis on the vegetables, not on the fruits, although the fruits is the main word there. So while I don't want to get into this video and tell you guys what exactly to eat because you know it, it ranges, I will tell you some of the things that you should probably be doing on a raw foods diet. Whether you want to eat 100% raw, whether you want to eat 80% raw, 70% raw, 60% raw, even 50% raw, right? At 50% whole plant food based fruit and vegetable dominated diet, you're still doing better than most of the population. And that being said, it's not only about what you are eating but it's also about what you are not eating, what you guys are removing, and what you guys are displacing, you know, by eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. My brother, you know, I've been hanging out with my brother lately because he's out for the summer, and we went hiking and whatnot, and, 
you know, he had trouble with his knees at the end of the hike. And I'm like, I'm just like, man, man let's go more. And I'm like, let's hike some more. And he's like, no, I'm too tired. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he, I mean, he just goes out and he gets Costco pizza. I sat across the table from him. He's eating his Costco pizza. And I mean, my organic Costco blueberries, <laughs> which I then returned because they did not actually taste good. They were very low quality. Um, but, you know, my goal is not to get him to change to a raw vegan diet because honestly, he's probably never going to be a raw vegan unless he has some major health issue and he really has motivation to change. But my goal is that I could just get him to eat like two of his meals a day raw vegan and, and healthy, nutrient-dense foods, and he still eats one meal a day of his junk food, whatever he wants. That's way better than eating three meals of junk food, which is what he's currently doing, right? And he'll come over and I'll make him juices. We're hiking, you know, I basically that for half the day anyways, he was drinking liquids and fresh juices that I made him. Although I drank probably like three times the quantity of juice, so he probably wasn't actually eating enough that day. But he does have more weight to lose than I do. So I hope to make a video with him, actually. And if you would like that, hey, thumbs up. And also leave some comments down below. Let me know because I'm going to trans tra tra help my brother transition from eating super junky <laughs> to healthier. <laughs> um, and so I don't know. I'm, he doesn't like to be in videos, so I'm trying to get him to agree to this uh, project, and we're going to track his results, his weight loss, and all this kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, there's good, better, best ways to do it, right? And I want you guys to include more fruits and vegetables, whatever, you know, quantity that is, and also, you know, mine the items uh, that you do eat that are not fruit and vegetables, right? So I want to get into some of my tips on eating a healthy uh, fruit and vegetable dominated or raw foods diet. Number one, you want to stick to whole foods as much or as primarily as possible. So fresh fruits and vegetables in their whole nat natural, ripe, raw uh, state as possible. You know, don't buy them pre-processed. You know, I rarely will buy pre-cut salad mixes, pre-cut fruits to eat, although that's better than a candy bar. It's better to buy the whole fruit that's in its full package that you cut, right? Uh, because once you do cut a fruit, cut a vegetable, you know, um, it can cause uh, nutrient loss. So that's very important, right? Uh, focus on whole fruits and vegetables, right? Don't buy processed or highly processed fruit and vegetables, even if they are labeled raw, you know, kale chips. You know, I'd call them, you know, minimally processed compared to other processed foods in the grocery store. Even fresh juices, right? Though, juicing is a process, and if I'm not doing the juicing myself, I generally don't like to drink juice unless I'm traveling and I can't really get anything else. Um, uh, so focus on fruits and vegetables and whole as much as possible. And if you want to process your fruits and vegetables, do it yourself. You're always going to do a better job than somebody else. Number two, I want you guys to source the highest quality food as you guys could get your hands on, right? I mean, I go around to different farmer's markets. I go to different farms. I bring my bricks meter. I try to test and, and find the best cherries, for example. And, you know, I try to add things to my soil so I could grow the best melons above and peppers down below and harvest them when they're completely ripe and even wrinkly. I actually made an amazing, actually, I didn't do this on purpose. Last night was like a no fat added like sauce for my shredded um, zucchini. And it was basically just a, a ton of peppers from my garden. Some of them were actually a little bit drier than I would like. So actually that made the sauce extra thick. I then added some uh, tomatoes and then some, uh, some dates for sweetener. I added some, uh, some lemon cucumbers that I had pickled and some, uh, Italian seasoning and a little bit of miso oh, and about five cloves of garlic and that made an amazing sauce and then actually my fat was actually added in on top which are actually olives I didn't actually have a uh, nut that I would normally do blended into the mixture but it's quite good but anyways I want you guys to have a, get the highest quality food and if you go to the local grocery store it can be challenging to do this grocery store food is basically grown for profit not quality you know, and especially conventionally raised food can be imbalanced, not to say that it's bad, but just to say that there are, there's better, you know, so try to buy organic whenever you guys can in general, but not always, uh, you know, it will be more nutritious. Uh, next after that, support local farmers, farmers markets, ask them what kind of fertilizer they're using, um, ask them when the food was harvested and try to get uh, and support farmers that harvested the produce that day or the day before and that are using like organic compost and hopefully even rock dust minerals which are pretty rare to find on farmers and uh, and then even better than that is grow yourself and even if you live in an apartment in new york city you guys could grow microgreens i'll post a link down below to a video i did on microgreens of a place out of baltimore that's growing microgreens they're the most nutrient dense foods on the entire planet i don't think it would hurt anybody not to eat more 
microgreens, including myself. I don't eat enough microgreens, actually. Um, and then other than that, have an outside garden. You could set up a small raised bed garden, you know, four foot by four foot raised bed just to get your feet wet to start out. If you've never grown anything before, check my other YouTube channel, Growing Your Greens, for information on how to do just that. So, yeah, the quality is super important, super critical. Now, aside from the quality of the produce you're eating, I want you guys also to have a variety of produce, right? Don't just eat banana, 30 bananas today, 30 bananas tomorrow, 30 bananas the next day, as, as good as bananas are, and people rave about them as, bananas are my dietary staple, right? <laughs> well, they're not my staple, but some people say that. <laughs> I would never make bananas my staple. And if you're an athlete, hey, you might need bananas as your staple because they're generally a high calorie food. But you know, I'd much rather have, you know, good organic cherries or blueberries or um, purple cactus fruit you know as one of my staples because besides having the you know good sugars that actually feed our brain and, and help fuel us it also has high antioxidant values that are going to be anti-inflammatory and anti-aging so it's basically food with benefits it's not like friends with benefits <laughs> food with benefits so i want you guys to eat actually foods with benefits is the next thing right um, um eat Choose foods that have additional benefits, you know. So, for example, like if you eat lettuce all the time, hey, lettuce is great. Romaine hearts are great. I know a lot of people might eat a lot of romaine hearts. But, you know, instead of getting romaine hearts all the time, get some kale, right? Kale has additional benefits that lettuce does not have, like being anti-cancerous and anti-aging for you guys, right? And if you like don't like eating a salad of kale, which, unless it's out of my garden, I really don't like eating salads of kale, especially if it's store-bought kale, you know, have like half as much lettuce and then fill in the other half with kale. So now you have a lettuce kale, so it's like a little bit lighter and not gonna taste as strong if you're not used to some of those stronger flavors. But yeah, I want you guys to uh, eat a variety, super important, you know, try to go to farmer's markets, go to Asian markets in your area. They often have greens that are not available at regular health food stores, right? But especially if you're going to Asian markets to buy your greens, just uh, do some internet searches to make sure those greens can be eaten raw because some of the greens at Asian markets do need to be cooked uh, to deactivate some of the na natural plant toxins within them. You know, and eat different kinds of fruits. You know, I, I eat seasonally. That's very important to me. You know, not only because when I'm eating seasonally, I'm eating the freshest uh, raw foods and fruits in season, but also that means that my diet is constantly and everlasting changing so it never gets boring you know right now actually I got some light cheese from Mexico had some Ramy tans last week had a jackfruit going out to season oh and I had I went to Colorado got some organic cherries that were amazing like 30 on the bricks which is almost off the scale I've been eating like stone fruits apricots peaches you know I think oh, I just got some California strawberries recently you know so try to eat seasonal fruits, fruits that will come and go. You know, apples are always available year-round. Bananas are always available year-round, right? And I, I try to eat those foods more in the wintertime when I don't have some of the other more interesting, unique, and delicious, you know, fruits to eat. You know, also leafy greens. You know, my garden is full of my summer leafy greens this time of year. I don't, I don't really have any lettuce except some tropical lettuce growing. But I have water spinach and Egyptian spinach and, and this stuff right here that I'm touching while I'm uh, <laughs> making this video called Aptinia. And I have purslane. So I'm eating those greens. And see, the thing is when we eat a variety, we're getting a whole spectrum of different phytonutrients, phytochemicals, and vitamins and minerals. Each different plant will absorb different, uh, you know, components and nutrients from the ground the different minerals and then also based on the sun energy each plant is its own little chemical factory and each plant will make its own little chemicals and every plant is a little bit different <laughs> you know it makes different phytochemicals that could be beneficial for us but also they could have anti-nutrients and not be good so, so good for us so that's a really good reason to like not eat anything in large quantities and always eat a little bit of everything you know so always mix it up so that you're going to get some of the beneficial nutrients in each leafy green, for example, and some of the smaller amounts of the anti-nutrients because you're always rotating and you're never going to get a buildup of any one bad thing in your diet because you're not eating kale each and every day. Um, so yeah, that's super important. And then also, like I talked about, you know, you want to eat foods with benefits, with additional benefits, high antioxidant benefits. The easy way, easiest way to know that is to if a food is colorful, it has more antioxidant benefits, right? If you go to the store and you, the choices are like a lettuce, like hearts, the romaine hearts that are kind of like whitish, like yellow, those are like old, uh, you know, they're not as nutritious as like a head of lettuce, like open face red lettuce, 
right? That's nice, deep, rich red color, a lot deeper greens, right? I know the open head red lettuce is more expensive than a through pack of romaine hearts, but buy the red lettuce because it's more nutritious. You're gonna get additional benefits that far outweigh the price uh, difference, you know? These are critical components, and I wonder if people that have failed on raw foods, like what are they eating? Are they eating bananas and dates all day? Are they just eating romaine hearts, and they're, they're not eating a varied diet, you know? I mean, and then even over and above that, right? Are you eating the proper amounts of fats, right? Definitely there's too much fats. You could have too much fats on a raw foods diet, and you could have too little fats on a raw foods diet. And what is the right amount? What's the right amount, John? Well, I'll tell you the right amount for me. The right amount for me, and what I believe, is between 15 to 20% fat uh, by calories in my diet. And that, of course, changes. Some days I'll eat lower fat, and some days I might eat a few extra avocados. It might be up to 30%, but I really don't like to go above that because if I'm eating too much fat, then I feel sluggish, and that's an indicator to me that that's not right for my body. And so you guys need to figure out what the, what the right percentage of fat is for you. And also, what is the source of the fat you're eating? All fats are not created equal, right? <laughs> Whole food sources of fats, in my opinion, are su vastly superior to processed fats, right? So eat, eat and chew up properly some nuts. Eat and chew up properly some olives. Eat and chew up properly some coconut or some avocados, right? Whole food sources of fats dominate and they rule compared to extracted oils, which is another way you guys could totally eat fat. But the problem is when you're eating the oils, you're basically eating an extracted fat that basically is devoid of other, most other nutrients aside from just the fat calories that you know will probably go to your hips. Whereas nuts, they've shown in studies, when you eat nuts, it actually helps pull fat out of you. <laughs> and also the fats, especially when you're eating them with the vegetables or the foods with benefits such as cherries, for example, you know, you're gonna get a higher uptake of some of the anthocyanins and some of the different phytochemicals in the plants you guys are eating. So that's also very important as well. So we also wanna eat the proper amount of fruits and the proper amount of vegetables. We don't eat too many fruits <laughs> and we don't eat too few fruits and we don't wanna eat too many vegetables and we don't wanna eat too few vegetables. That's super critical, super important. I see a lot of people fail on this note in my opinion. I mean, fruits are simple to eat, they taste good. I think fruits can often easily be overeaten. Now if you're somebody running marathons, hey, you probably need more fruit for sure. But if you're not doing marathons and not exercising as much, you probably don't need as much fruit um, you know, as maybe your favorite YouTube hero eats, right? So I, I, I kind of like in a way the what I eat in a day videos. I do them myself, I try not to do too many of them. Uh, in some ways I dislike them because people shouldn't necessarily follow that person unless their lifestyle exactly matches and models your metabolism exactly the same as and your activity level is exactly the same as the person making the video. Plus, you know, some of the people making videos on what I eat in a day, you know, they may have different goals, you know, than, than say I would. So like my videos wouldn't be like that. You could check some of my past what I eat in a day videos. Maybe I'll do some, uh, you know, upcoming in the future. Um, but we want to eat enough fruits and not too much. We want to eat enough vegetables and not too much, you know. So for me these days, what I like to do is I like to eat one meal of fruits a day, you know. Then the other meals of my days are basically vegetables, although I do have an exclusion, which is actually berries. So I could eat one fruit meal a day, and if I want to eat another second meal of fruit, then it has to be some kind of berries or high antioxidant and more lower sugar fruit. Other than that, I like to eat lots of vegetables. You know, I think it's definitely, I definitely see more people overeat fruit and undereat vegetables than eat too many vegetables and undereat fruit, <laughs> which I guess is, is uh, kind of sad. And so, you know, I would say work on getting more vegetables in you. You know, don't make your diet vegetable based because then you're missing nutrients from other foods. <laughs> but, you know, you want to have a fruit and vegetable based diet where you're eating mostly fruits and vegetables and then small amounts and percentages of other. Uh, food items uh, that you deem fit and that are healthy for you. So my general diet of what I'm eating these days is, is pretty basic. I'll just tell you guys instead of filming because I would take a whole extra day and whatnot. So generally in a day I have uh, two juices. So my first juice of the day these days have been 32 ounces of celery juice or maybe 30 ounces. Second juice of the day is whatever I have. So I had some watermelon the other day, uh, I had cucumber, uh, celery, ginger the other day, I had carrot, uh, beet, um, turmeric, uh, ginger, pineapple, um, sometimes I'll put greens in there. It's just basically any various uh, juice that I'll drink for my second juice of the day. 
about another 30 ounces. Sometimes I'll, instead of that, I'll have a green smoothie or sometimes a fruit smoothie, although I, I do tend to prefer to do uh, green smoothies. And then generally after that, I'll have a fruit meal. Um, you know, these days I've been eating things from lychees, cherries. I should have had a meal of two pounds of strawberries. Um, and then at night, then I'll have my vegetable meal. So usually like a big salad or a big vegetable-based soup that's based around peppers is my favorite, uh, you know, uh, um, base I like to use. It could be a salad. Last night I had zucchini pasta. But basically a nice big vegetable meal to basically round out my day. And that's pretty much it. And then maybe sometimes I'll have a dessert. So last night I was actually snacking on like freeze-dried light cheese for dessert and freeze-dried mango that I made at home. That was completely insane. And that's pretty much it. That's my day. And so not to say that you should be like this, but you know, generally I think that by adding juices and especially smoothies that are vacuum blended can increase the amount of raw food percentage you guys can eat even if you're not eating raw foods at all at this point like that's my brother you know if I do get my brother to agree to a video he doesn't have to make these crazy salads and all these things you know I just want him to get as much raw foods in him as possible and the easiest and tastiest way for him to do that would be juices so basically I'd have I'd probably make him juices that he would just have to drink <laughs> who wants to be my brother and uh, you know he would drink some juice in the day and then I make him a green smoothie with some fruit in there to make, make it taste good but also plenty of greens especially some anti-diabetes and uh, you know cholesterol um, greens I have growing in my garden because he's been having some challenges with that and then those would be his two meals of the day a juice meal a smoothie meal and then you'd have whatever junk he's gonna eat for dinner right and I think that'd probably be uh, you know a, 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 a huge step for mankind and for his health <laughs> in that instance uh, so yeah, and that might be a good plan for some of you guys out there because I like juicing because it really concentrates the volume of fruits and vegetables you guys could get in. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily sit there and eat two pounds of carrots, but if I juice two pounds of carrots, that makes 16 ounces of juice, that now I'm getting the benefits of the, of the two pounds of carrots, you know. Um, and it's very important when you drink and juice, don't just chug it down as fast as you can because it tastes nasty. Chew your juice, put it in your mouth, swish it around, mix it with some saliva, Make the chewing motions in your mouth because chewing is in a very important part to get your digestive system working. And if you're not chewing, you're just glugging stuff down, you're not going to get as good a digestion. And nurse your juice. You know, don't just drink your juice really fast. You know, have a sip. You know, and I like to say drink your juices and smoothies as long as it would take you to eat that food. You know, if you were eating carrots, how long would it take you? Your juice that you're drinking should also take you a good period of time. And I think people eat way too fast in our society today. Another challenge I see with people is that they're not taking any supplements. You know, I get it. You know, I like to get my diet and my nutrients from whole foods as much as possible. But in this day and age, you know, that we've kind of messed up ecology of the soil and messed up nature. And we live in a very artificial environment compared to how we used to be. We polluted streams and, you know, spread chemtrails up in the sky, if you believe in that, and all this kind of contamination. Um, you know, we can't just live on raw foods anymore. Even if you're a carnivore meat eater, you're not getting your B12 either by eating, you know, GMO-fed, uh, you know, cattle that are fed GMO corn and soy um, because the cows aren't eating the bacteria, so they don't have B12 anymore unless they're getting injections, actually. Um, so I, I do like to take a B12 supplement, and if it's not the summertime, I do like to also take a vitamin D supplement. You know, and, and so those are some of the main things. I've taken also some zinc in the past, uh, boost the immunity, especially in the winter time. And uh, the DHA oil, also super critical um, for me. Um, also things like vitamin K2, you know. You could take a K2 supplement, but instead when I'd say, hey, John, there's a possible nutritional deficiency in your diet, how can you get that nutrient? You know, I'm like, well, let's find out what foods that nutrient is in, right? So if you need iron, right, hey, eat some leafy greens, eat some spinach, eat other kinds of leafy greens that have the iron in there. If you need vitamin K2, you know, the best source is actually like natto. So I eat some natto several times a week to get some vitamin K2, plus also some of the other benefits from the, the you know, uh, soy that has been fermented. And so I would always encourage you guys to strive for doing research and learning about what nutrients may be deficient in your diet, whatever that diet is. You know, I have a few videos on this channel. If I remember, I'll post the links down below to, uh, you know, when I go to a health food store and, and share some of my opinions on what, uh, you know, supplements might be necessary in a raw foods diet. You know, of course, I also take green powders and different, uh, drink green juices all the time. And I think those definitely would be a, a, a better uh, strategy first before um, getting, um, you know, isolated vitamin 
supplements if you can get the, the nutrients you need from a whole powdered food that has just simply been concentrated and they could prove it you know, uh, on the label. I think another big challenge, probably the hugest challenge that I, that I see that's going on and why people are not successful and why raw food diets aren't created equal because each raw food diet, whether that's a raw till four, high carb, low fat, high fat, <laughs> low carb, ketogenic raw food, fruitarian, um, you know, uh, natural hygiene style, I think they all could get a little bit too dogmatic and they're like, these are the rules and this is what you need to stick to. You need to eat this percentage of calories and, you know, and carbs and this percentage and this and this percentage of that. You don't need to eat garlic and onions that are irritant, you know, or you need to eat this much fat or you need to eat coconut oil. I mean, everybody has like their specific rigid guidelines. And, you know, I think, I think that might be good for some people because, I mean, in general, I think people do need some guidelines because, unfortunately, in our society, we're not taught how to think for ourselves. We want, we are taught to follow. In our society, straight up, we're taught to follow. If you go through school, higher education, you're basically, for the most part, taught how to follow, read this book, and do it this way. And, you know, I think that's definitely not a good thing in terms of diet and health. I mean, it's good to def definitely get a good, uh, you know, realization and a good guidelines or framework to live in but not like specific things that you must or must not do. You know, because a lot of the, the systems and programs or ways of eating raw foods, in my opinion, are maybe not the best way and are, are, could be considered flawed ways in one way or another based on my specific goals and what I'm specifically looking for and what I'm specifically after. So I really think you need to have a good basis and a good place to start, um, but also use your brain and also, you know, try to even take it further because, you know, not every dietary plan is thought out every possible thing, even the way I eat, right? I know what I know based on my 23 years of researching and, and educating myself and, and experimenting on myself, but I still don't know anything, everything. I'm still learning new things. I'm still modifying, changing my approach and making it even better, right? So check with me in another 50 years you want to learn how to do it the best way possible and then still I won't know everything right and things information will change new research and data will come out so you know I want you guys to have an open mind and not get too dogmatic about everything um, as much as you know some plans say don't do this you must do this like I, I don't know man I, I always like to strive for good better best try to stick to some of the basics you know eat more vegetables especially the leafy green vegetables eat enough fruit but not too much fruit um, you know, have some nuts and seeds. They're not, they're not the devil, <laughs> you know. But don't eat too many, uh, you know, fats, whether they're nuts and seeds or avocados or anything else, right? I mean, basically the diet's about eating just enough, not too much, not too little. What is that amount? Well, that's when you need to start listening to your body. And I know for a lot of you guys, that might be scary to listen to your body. How does my body know what's good? Well, trust me, your body knows what's good, but the problem is you have tuned out your body because we're just so used to just shoving stuff in our pie hole and eating it and not listening to how we feel not li not being you know aware of how it makes our bodies feel so i want you guys to eat consciously right slow down when you're eating take a bite check in with your body check in with your left pinky toe check in with your leg check in with your heart check in with your stomach after you take each bite how do you feel do you feel different did you do you feel a change and and if, if are you feeling better or worse right and I think that's a big part of it, but that shouldn't be everything. You shouldn't just only think about how you feel because, you know, many foods are deceptive. They'll make you feel good and, you know, maybe fraudulently. <laughs> Met a girl like that once. But uh, anyways, um, so yeah, so, so many different things. I, got, I, I want you guys just to be more aware. And if you guys want some approaches or systems that I have found that works over the long term, I want you guys to check out two books. One is a book on um, actually Nutritarian Diet by Dr. Joel Furman, you know. He has a most solid framework and he gives a lot of flexibility within that framework, um, you know, to, to be optimally healthy. And so I'll post links down below to his Eat to Live book. Also, if you are interested into a raw foods diet, there's a really good book by Dr. Rick and Karen Dina, who I respect highly. And they basically have a really good book about eating more fruits and vegetables and not to eat too much fruit and not to eat too many vegetables. It's probably the most well-written raw foods book that I've seen out there. I'll post a link down below in the description uh, to the Amazon if you guys want to pick up that book. Also, watch my videos, right? I have a lot of videos and I just try to share my story, what I'm eating, how I'm eating, what I'm growing, and you know, I, I get other people that have been doing this a while and how they're eating, right? And if I, if there was a disease that I had and I was eating for a specific disease, I, I probably would be eating differently than I am eating now. I'm eating for a good maintenance, longevity, 
and health diet at this point. But if I was fighting something, you know, I, I would I would cater my diet towards that and eat different things. Probably eat a lot more greens. Probably do a lot more juicing. I probably actually do a lot more sprouting and growing wheatgrass and and uh, microgreens and whatnot. So you know, th there's no like cut and dry like this is what raw foods is, right? I want you guys to, to define what is raw foods to you, and it should have some of the criteria that I've mentioned in this video. You know, high in vegetables, high in leafy greens. You know, appropriate amount of fruit, appropriate amount of fats. And then you might not want to be all raw, so then you can include other plant foods. You know, some cooked plant foods, yes, I say this as a raw foodist, are healthier than some raw foods. You know, like raw food desserts at a raw food restaurant, right? Come on, let's face it. Those are high in fat, high in extracted sugars, which are not healthy. <laughs> and, you know, some steamed kale out of my garden um, would be healthier. Although I'd rather juice my kale out of my garden instead of eat the raw dessert or steam it. But, you know, good, better, best is what I want you guys to teach you and not be so dogmatic. I have to eat all raw. Get that rule out of your head, right? Eat as much raw as you feel comfortable with. And if you need to have some cooked beans, some, some you know, cooked kale, some cooked vegetables, you know, know this. Cook, cooked leafy green vegetables are still healthier than most anything on the planet, right? So that's pretty much what I'm going to leave you guys with today. Don't be so dogmatic. Eat just enough, but not too much of uh, the fruits and vegetables so that you guys could remain healthy and thrive on a raw fruit and vegetable dominated diet. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, leave your comments and questions down below. I'll take a look at them if I'm able, maybe respond to a few if I have some time. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes. I'm coming out about every three, uh, five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up. We'll be learning on my channel. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. Oh, my God, my past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I started this channel over nine years ago now, longer than most people on YouTube that are making raw food videos. Have you even been raw? I to share with you guys everything that I've known and learned over my years about being on a healthy fruit and vegetable dominated diet. Um, I guess with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRAW.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.